to 170 pounds, the welterweight title on the line. Two veterans of the sport will take a quick look at the tail of the tape before we get the action started in what could be a fantastic fight. Big implications for the winner. You see Gunderson, four years, the elder, everything else about the same. Parisian does have a two-inch reach advantage, but Gunderson usually considered the stronger striker. Let's see how this fight plays Unbelievable out. Unbelievable to thinking that uh, Gunderson is the older fighter. Carlos seems like he's been around, he's been around forever, you know, he can't believe he's under 30. Gunderson in the white tights, Parisian in the black and white board shorts. Parisian had his first professional fight at 16 years old, so he's been in the game at nice high level for a Nice lead left hook by time. Gunderson, nice lead left hook. But he throws that leg kick and Parisian moves inside quickly, takes the fight to the floor. Again, I said, you know, I think Gunderson, most people consider Gunderson the better striker with his hands, especially but when you throw those low kicks like that, you do expose that leg to be grabbed for someone to move inside to move the fight to the floor. Carl Parisian, an excellent judoka, although his neck is tied a little bit in this choke. Not a whole lot there. A lot of people, the, the throws of judo are what's so special. As Gunnarsson tries to sweep out, the throws are what's so beautiful about it. But people, I think, tend to forget that it's not all about just throws. There's a lot of grappling involved in judo Very training as well. So. Right. Especially world-class judo. World-class judo is, is the takedowns are, are magnificent. Now you see people with just a black belt in judo, and oftentimes they're not great athletes. But high-level judo, Kara Parisian was, was third in the United States at one point. So he's so talented. Carl Parisian is on top right now. What a Step nice guard pass. Wow. Oh, right through the middle. Amazing his right guard hip, pass. That baseball slide through. He's got that right over under hook on uh, Gunnarsson. Again, Gunnarsson in the white trunks on the bottom. Parisian the black and white on the top. Jason Reinhardt, somebody that's fought in three different weight classes during your time in his career. I mean, is, do you think right now Gunderson is maybe regretting this? Is there maybe feeling a strength advantage? Uh, you know, you, they don't look any different as far as what you never know. I mean, I, you, it depends. I mean, uh, it, it's what Gunderson's feeling. I mean, uh, size-wise, they don't look they look the same, don't you think? I agree. Gunderson was able to scramble up to his feet. Parisian landed a nice jab. Gunderson looks very calm and relaxed. However, answers back with a sharp knee up the middle. Gunderson throwing a kick to the body just as Parisian was looking to work inside, walked into the knee. Parisian, you see, trying to set up the inside trip right now, Look unable at the balance. to do so. Look at the balance of Parisian. I'll tell you guys, Parisian looks good. He does, but Gunderson bringing it. And He's always going to be in it with those huge knees. So you can see the, flush. the redness on the cheek of Carl Parisian. A big home run swing there by John Gunderson. This is right. He saw white there as it went right up there on his cheek, and he cut him open there. Parisian dives in again for the takedown, trying to wrap the body. Gunderson instead pulls guard, looking for the guillotine choke. He's going to want to get his right hip down. It's that arm in. That's He's it. tapping out. That's the Are you kidding me? The judo submission specialist taps out to Gunderson, who's newer to wow. jiu-jitsu. This is unbelievable. Wow. 
Oh, and he tapped quickly. He's dejected. He stays on his knees. There's obviously a lot of pain. I don't know if Something maybe he read the orbital or the cheekbone from that, that right. knee That's that he walked into. Point. He has pain in that eye socket because now think of the pressure you would have on a broken orbital socket if someone jumped to a guillotine. Gunderson, he said, I took this fight on short notice and I moved up to 170 pounds, not my weight wow. class. Why? Because I want to be back in the U.S. John Gunderson wanted to make a statement in this fight. He absolutely made a statement here. I belong back in the UFC. He went and he said it before the fight. Then he went out and he proved it because he, he was able to get back to his feet against Kara Parisi. Doctors and looking at the eye there. You finishing. think there's something wrong with that, that orbital bone, the cheekbone. Right, something I'd like to see there. that knee again. We're going to take a look at the replays of that action from the opening round. Obviously, the team of Carl Parisian a little disappointed, but yeah. I mean, it was a legitimate finish. Yeah. And, and, and that is legitimately the problem. Was the problem right yeah. there? The, the leg kick, Carl Parisian catches it and drives forward, getting the takedown. There's the beautiful well, pass. Parisian looked very nice strong pass. early, passed yes. very easy. And there it is on the there. right My cheek. Gosh. The right Right cheek. Wow. Great work for her. And John Gunderson now decided leg. to give up. I mean, this is risky. If you lose that no. submission, you're now underneath Carl Parisi. But Instead, he locked it in full guard, dropped a guillotine, I got the finish. Great work from John Guns Gunderson. He wanted to make a statement. He did not just move up to 170 pounds and win a fight. <laughs> he moved up to 170 pounds That's and looked dominant. Again, he, he was on his back early, but he looked dominant. So let's go up and get the official time of the finish for the win from the new champ, John Gunderson. by John Gunderson. All right, I, I'm here with the winner, John Gunderson. Now, I heard you talk a little bit earlier. I want to make sure everybody was clear what happened here. We also had to fight a, an opponent. You don't like the belt? Okay, boys. I do, but okay, it's not too long. Okay, hold on to it too long. Thanks, this way, John. So, we were looking for a replacement for Shamar Bailey to fight Caro. We asked Gunderson if he knew anybody. He thought about it for a little bit, and... You did know somebody, didn't you? Yeah, was, I knew it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. At this point in time in my career, I gotta be fighting the guys that I look up to and the guys that have been there done that. I don't need a, I, I don't need easy fights. I need to fight the tough guys. And I knew moving up in weight, facing a guy like Carl would be a test for me and some, some I can look myself in the mirror and be proud of. For sure, there's not too many people that say they, they did to Carl what you just did. In fact, I don't know if anyone's got him in a guillotine and had him tap out. I don't think it's happened. Um, so, you, is this the first time you fought at 170? Yeah, and it's, it's the only time I'm going to fight at 170. I'm a, I'm a lightweight, and, I, you know, everyone knows I'm dangerous. I'm dangerous in the clinch with knees, and the knees what set up the guillotine. I landed a good knee, but, uh, you know, I got sloppy. He put me in some pretty shitty positions right off the bat, and, you know, nerves going. going. I had to settle down, and I felt like I had it when he stuck his head in there, and I just went for it. Right, well, that knee, it looked like after the fight that he was actually more worried about, uh, was it his eye that was hurting? Yeah, I, I felt it go right, right to the cheekbone. So, uh, I just threw it and, and it landed, you know. Carl's a, Carl's a beast. I got nothing but respect for Carl. And you guys should give it up for Carl. That guy's done so much. Let's bring him over here. Carl, come on over here, man. This is a legend right here, Carl Parisian. Yeah, I know it was a tough fight. Gunderson's been around the block as well as you have, uh, but you you put up a good fight. But you got caught in that guillotine. Was it more from the choke, or were you injured from the from the knee? Nothing taken away from John. He did a great fight. He won the fight fair and square. It wasn't much of the choke. It was much of a I caught his I caught a knee. I think it fractured my cheekbone, and I couldn't open my mouth. But so the guillotine went in. It was clearly on my chin, but he kept on putting pressure on that chin. So uh, I didn't want to take the chance to really break my chin, so I just chapped out. But he. 
It's first time I ever tapped out in a case, so all the hand, all the things that you on this. Right on, man. That's a true champion. You, you'll take this loss and, and learn from it. We'd like to see you come back here. Would you like to, both of you guys come back and, and fight for show fight again? Definitely. I, trust me, it's my pleasure. I'll come fight again. No problem. You guys want to see these two come back and fight some other opponents and have some fun in this cage? Right on. Let's hear it one more time. Carl Parisian. And John, you want to thank somebody? Uh, fans, training partners, my camp high stand, family at home. I'm very sorry for this. I promise you I'm way better than that, but stuff happens with MMA. So look at it as a learning uh, prospect. Whatever. Thank you. God bless Springfield. Thank you, Carl. How about you, John? Make sure you have a chance to thank those people you want to thank. Yeah, I want to thank, I want to thank Gil Martinez. He didn't come out here. Uh, he put a lot of work in with me. I want to thank Fred Simpaxdale. I've been training with him for about three to four months, and he's turned my ground, my ground up, you know, 100%. I feel so much better. I want to thank my corner, Fredson. Evan Dunham, Jason Lilly, and my, and my co-worker Eddie, who's in my corner. And I want to thank everyone back at Extreme Couture for, uh, you know, we just put in hard work there. And I'm leaving right now to go home for Father's Day, see my girls. Right on, man. You got a daughter named Tatum, don't you? Exactly. I got a daughter named Tatum and another daughter named Michaela. I'm coming home. Right on. I got a daughter named Tatum, too. All right, take care, John. Good job. Congratulations. Let's hear it for him. John.